Hello there, Entitled Survivors and Killers. Today I'm back with another tutorial video for you. And today, it's about the basement. What you can do down there, what is the basement, and why it's so important you understand how to escape it. When I have played games with my fellow teammates and against other survivors, I have seen the most terrible plays go on. So disappointing, so sad, so many bodies down there. So today I've made this video to help players understand the basement and what they can do if they find themselves trapped down there. So without delay, let's begin. Every map will always have a basement on it. The basement can be identified as it has the same structure no matter what map it spawns in or where it spawns. It can either spawn inside of the main building, or if the map has a killer shack, it can spawn at the bottom of the killer shack. The basement will always be on the lowest level possible. Inside the basement, there will always be four hooks, one for each of your teammates. There will also be four lockers in the basement, coincidentally, one for each of your teammates. And there will also be a chest that will always spawn no matter what inside of the basement, either in this corner or the opposite far corner. You can search the basement and the chest for an item if you want to. However though, this will take you 10 precious seconds and can be heard by survivors and killers from the floor above. When on the hook or in the basement, you can look through the boards on the wall of the stairs to see the killer through and get an early warning. You can also pan your camera around the corner to look up the stairs before you decide to leave. In the basement, there are a lot of places where you can hide and still see through the boards on the wall while also hiding your body. This can let you play around stealthily without having to get in a locker yet. You can also enter a locker to quiet your breathing and injured sounds. However though, a killer can pull you out at full health. A killer can hear you by your injured sounds when above the basement. Crouching will muffle your sound somewhat. You can also hear the difference between standing and crouching in this clip. Getting into a locker will muffle your injured sounds the most, so if you're trying to avoid detection, a locker would be your best choice. Getting out of the basement can be quite tricky, as the killer gets a notification and can block the stairs, easily able to hit survivors as they try to make their way out of the basement. I'll show you a few strategies to help you counter that. When on the hook, you can look through the stairs, as previously mentioned, to see if the killer is camping. You can also judge this by their terror radius. However, you cannot hear the terror radius in the struggle phase. Uh, 
If you are being camped, simply swing your arms on hook to signal to your other teammates that you're being camped. Your teammates can see this across the map with their aura reads. If you feel you're out of options, your best course of action would be to try and get pulled instead of getting down on the ground. If you get down, the killer can simply leave you. But, if you were to get pulled out of a locker, the killer must make a choice of either hooking you or putting you on the ground. At which point, you will have earned some wiggle progress and can start crawling out of the basement. Sometimes after a basement save, the killer will come to interrupt you and the person who unhooked you. In that case, if you both jump into the lockers that are side by side at the end of the stairs, the killer cannot slug either one of you and is forced to pick one of you out of a locker, giving the other person ample time to escape. This also prevents tunneling as the killer doesn't know who is in which locker. Decisive Strike is a perk that activates once you are unhooked. If you are grabbed within 60 seconds from either the ground, a vault, or from a locker, you'll get a hard skill check that if you succeed will stun the killer for 5 seconds and disable Decisive Strike. This is very useful in the basement as if you use the double locker strategy, one of you will have an active DS which can prevent the killer from tunneling you, and if the killer picks the wrong lockers, you can simply DS the killer, and both of you can make your escape. Head-on is a perk that activates after standing in a locker for 3 seconds. If head-on is active and you do a rushed exit out of a locker, you can stun a killer that is in front of a locker. After stunning a killer, you'll be exhausted for 40 seconds. And, if you stay within a locker for 60 seconds, the perk will become disabled. This can be an extremely useful perk as it allows you and your teammates to escape a dangerous situation while having a very easy activation requirement. Perk Quick and Quiet will reduce the loud noise notification you make when fast exiting or fast entering a locker. This can be useful in trying to hide your position in the basement from a killer, or prevent the killer from tunneling the person who just got unhooked. Deception is a perk that activates while you are sprinting and beside a locker. It will open and close the doors and make a loud noise notification to the killer. This can be useful in the basement in trying to confuse the killer into which locker you are in, allowing you to escape easier. When survivors are hooked in the basement and the killer has monstrous shrine, they die 9% faster, have a 15% less chance when attempting to escape, and take 9% more timer damage when attempting. Territorial Imperative lets the killer see survivors when they enter the threshold of the top of the stairs to the basement. The killer must be 32 meters away, and this can only trigger every 20 seconds. The bloodied blueprint will reveal the aura of the basement hooks to you for 20 seconds right at the start of a match. It will also guarantee that the basement spawns in the killer shack, unless another offering is played.
The torn blueprint will also show you the auras of the basement hooks for 20 seconds at the beginning of a match. However though, this one will guarantee that the basement spawns in the main building, unless another offering is played. This dark space in the corner right here can be used to hide from the killer on darker maps or when the killer is hooking someone in the basement. When using decisive strike and unhooking someone, if you both use the double locker strategy, the killer will have no idea and no way to identify who's in which locker so you can turn a lose-lose situation into a 50-50 chance. If the killer picks up the person who has decisive strike, that person will simply hit them, and you both can leave. If the killer picks up the person who just unhooked them, then the killer at least won't be able to tunnel. If either person in the lockers has head-on, they can use the head-on sun to give both people enough time to escape. However though, this requires good timing. If the player on the left side has head-on, and the player on the right side is pulled out, the killer will usually have to cross the threshold of the left player's head-on stun, which means that that player can head-on stun the killer, save the person on the shoulder, and they both have enough time to escape the basement. If the person on the right side has a flashlight and the left side person is pulled out of the locker, it's possible to save them with a flashlight before the killer has time to react and turn his head, letting the both of you escape the basement safely. However though this requires near perfect timing and is very hard to pull off. The ideal setup for double lockers would have the person on the right hand side with a flashlight and head on to stun the killer or save the person on the left. And the left hand side person would have DS and head on so that they could do a head on save or DS the killer if they are picked up and the flashlight attempt save doesn't go that well. If you ever end up with three people in the basement, simply do the double locker strategy with two players, then have the third player stay agile and mobile, and try to bait the killer into the far side of the room and get pulled out of the locker, as the long pull animation will easily allow the other two survivors to escape. And there we are. This is the end of the video, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new, something that can help you out in your trials against the entity. And I plan on uploading more of these tutorial videos, so stick around and stay tuned.